Good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you to our student forum, particularly our guests who are not music students but have come for this special forum. Our forums have been uh, of a variety of different kinds of guests yes. um, that have always inspired and have uh, invigorated our minds and our attitude to continue to work even harder. And we have actually saved. This is our last forum of the semester because the rest of the time we recited. We've actually saved our last, our best, for the last, our last for the best. However, yeah, our, yeah, our best for the last. And so many. I don't really need to give you a long, lengthy introduction because everybody knows her. Uh, she's actually Miss Music USC. And she, and she would also, also be Miss Music, music wherever else she's, she's been. been. Whether, Whether that's in Jamaica, Jamaica or Columbia, or wherever else she's, she's taught, she has been Miss Music. music. She's been Miss music, music to many of her students, students throughout her illustrious uh, career. So, so we're really happy. And looking, looking at this program, program I, can't I can't wait to hear what she has prepared for us. But we're going to have an opening prayer. And then I'm going to ask you to give it a warm applause and welcome to our guest today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the gifts that you have given to us in it. We thank you for our guest, Dr. Rosie Ward, who is going to present to us. And in her presentation, we will be inspired and renewed. Help us to be able to take the gifts that you've given to us and to be able to use them in like manner as she has used them. For your name is honoring the Lord. It is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would please give a warm welcome to Dr. Rosie Ward. Good afternoon. Thank you to all of you for coming. I know there's a lot that's going on on campus today at this time, so I'm very grateful for those who I have and those who may be on their way. Uh, this recital is a sort of thanksgiving because last year around this time I was going down with sciatica and I was very, very sick, in pain, I had to drop my students. I didn't touch the piano for months. But thank God and thank my friends and everybody else who was praying for me. Lots of medical intervention. And of course, more than that, God's help, I'm here today. So I welcome you to this recital. I am doing a repertoire that should sort of inspire those who are in the intermediate and a bit advanced because I thought this would inspire them because there are pieces that all of you can play. They're not the usual ones you hear, some of them are a bit different, so I'm hoping you will like them. I brought my keyboard because some of the pieces I begin with are using the organ or choir or harpsichord, so I'm hoping that the variety will interest you. Thank you. First, we begin with the Baroque period. This is the period of the late 1500s, 1600s, where there is a wealth of music for choral voices. Men's choirs, boys' choirs, in those great cathedrals in Europe, singing in Latin. The people do not sing. The priests and other men sing. And there's a lot of music for instrumental uh, instruments too, um, trumpets, flutes, lots of strings. We have organ, we have harpsichord, and 
composers are writing for these instruments. Along comes Protestantism in Germany and we have the birth of the chorale. The chorale is in German, it's written in four parts so people can sing it, so everyone can participate in their worship. And composers loving the chorales began to write uh, preludes for them, either uh, underneath the chorale to accompany or as interludes in between the phrases of the chorale. Uh, the second piece is a Handel piece. As you notice, Handel and Bach are both born in the same year, and they died about nine years apart from each other. Bach stayed in Germany. I don't think he ever moved anywhere else. Had his 20 children. Some music student wrote one time, Bach wrote a lot of music, but he's, uh, he had a lot of children, but he still found time to compose. And uh, so he wrote for organ, he wrote for instruments, for choirs, operas, oratorios, and uh, so there was a lot of music. Handel now wrote a lot of music too, but he traveled a lot. He went to Italy, he went to England, in fact he ended his life in England, and uh, a lot of music there too, a lot of oratorios. He was influenced by the music he heard in France and Italy. So some of that you will hear. Um, with Bach, I have a partita. The partita is like a suite. A suite is a set of pieces written in the same key. They're different, they have different flavors, but they're all strung together like a chain, a set of pearls. And uh, some musicians think that if Bach lived today, his music could be easily used in jazz. So we're going to ins uh, what do you say? Invent? No. Improvise. We're going to improvise to see how Bach's music, just as it is written, can go along with the percussion section. I have asked a few of the music students to play along with me. There's Crystal, there's Sarah, and there's Vaughn Micah. We hope you enjoy the program.
in the nocturne, a quiet evening piece. And composers so loved it that then everybody was writing nocturnes.
from Mozart is the Eine Kleine Nachtmusik, the first movement. We're going to cut a bit of it. to go to war. Many of them lost limbs, some of course lost their lives, but when they came back home, they were sort of in depression because they couldn't play, because they didn't have a right hand. So many of their colleagues began writing music for the left hand alone. So this is a piece for a left hand alone.
again, this pendulum swings back now, not so much heavy, but now they're going to be experimenting with all that the Baroque and the classical have given them. There is a lot more of mixtures. The orchestra is bigger, so there is a lot of music for other instruments. There is nationalism, so the composers in different countries are sharing their music and their instruments. So there's a lot of beautiful music during the Romantic period. Also, this is the period where um, there is a lot of influence of the supernatural, fantasy, dreams, love, and everything else connected with it during this period. So there's a lot of music with a lot of breath of feeling, expression, emotion. This is a piece written by Mendelssohn. Um, it's from his six Christmas pieces. I don't know why Christmas, but this is number five. Romantic one, Tramarai, dreaming.
is Chopin. Chopin writes a lot of music from his homeland, Poland. So there are lots of dances, polonaises, dances, waltzes, um, mazurkas, which have an interesting, I have a feeling that the dance includes some kind of jump or skip, because the music gives you that. written by Edward Grieg. Grieg comes from Norway, where there are many mountains and fjords, so he writes from that perspective. You feel the mountains, you feel the rivers, the vegetation, the butterflies, the flowers. So this piece is depicting butterflies visiting flowers. period, there appeared a composer from France, Claude Debussy, and he introduced what is known as Impressionism. And you see the influence of the artists in their paintings and the, in the literature. You think you are seeing something, but it's like it's shaded. The, the meanings of words are sort of mixed. You're not too sure. This is the period where he is really using the pedal a lot. He gets a lot of lush harmony out of octaves and fifths and fourths. 
It's really a different sound. This is uh, number eight of a set of 12 pieces, and each one is different. This is the girl with the flaxen hair. I imagine her sitting in a swing, going back and forth, and sometimes spinning, as children do. You can almost feel that. Now we're jumping over from Europe into the Western Hemisphere, and we touch down in the Americas. This is the late 1800s, 1900s and going on, and in America they are being influenced by the styles and the music of Africa. And because of slavery and everything, jazz is born, New Orleans. And the first piece is a piece called New Orleans Nightfall. It's a blues style, so it's lazy and slow in some parts.
Here is one now a little more upbeat. Uh, Peterson has three or four jazz exercises. This is two. by Scott Joplin. This is Honky Tonk Piano. The thing about this one, the rhythm is very interesting. It's a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So it's sometimes difficult to keep that rhythm. Ready? <laughs> and I learned to love the music there. This piece called Vino Tinto, which means dark coffee. Of course, Colombia, coffee. And again, this one has an interesting rhythm of one and two and three and one and two and three and that you have to keep up to. And I think my percussionist is doing a fine job. <laughs>
Danza del Viejo Boyero, Dance of the Old Cowhan, comes from Argentina. In Argentina, there are lots of different types of string instruments, and this one has the feeling of a stringed instrument. I will ask you a question at the end of it, so listen carefully. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you that this is written in two keys. D flat major in the left hand, so it plays the black keys, and C major in the right hand, playing the white keys. That's why you're hearing a lot of dissonance. I'll begin it again. that sound? Those of you who play guitar, tuning of the strings. <laughs> the last one we have is from Argentina again, Astor Piazzolla. Astor Piazzolla has written many, many pieces for piano with the flavor of the tango. This is a slow tango. And I am being accompanied by Sarah. Um, we thought on YouTube, if you listen to Oblivion, you can hear a hundred different um, types of this same song versions, arrangements. So Sarah and I decided to do our own improvisation. So she did some improvisation on her melody line and I did some on mine. So this is our improvisation.
I was invited to go to Suriname to do a music workshop. And I met there a lady by the name of Lisbeth Perotti. She um, has a commission, I guess, from the United Nations, and she works with the music education in Suriname. And she has put out two books so far, book one and book two, um, writing some uh, arrangements for some of the folk songs of the Caribbean. Some from Trinidad, some from Jamaica, some from Suriname. Um, in her books, you will see the titles in uh, Dutch, but we know them uh, in English also. So we are going to do two to end off our program. Um, Come Back Liza, which you know, and Mr. John Boulay. I want to say thank you to, again to Mr. Gibson and the music department for giving me this opportunity of playing at this time at their forum. Also, I want to thank Crystal. Please give her a hand. I had asked. Thank you. She learned this in two days because I had asked Anton to help me and he came and we practiced and then he got COVID. And so she just took up the strain. I appreciate it. Thank you. Also, um, where did she go? Sarah for filling in and improvising with me. Thank you. Thank you. 
also for my very talented, sometimes lazy student, Vaughn Michael, very talented, um, who is trying to do piano with me at the same time getting ready for CXC. So pray for him, but he's doing well. Thank you again to all of you. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ward. It was a fascinating program. Um, from the very first note from the uh, chorale tune all the way to the end with our folk songs. Um, it was a wonderfully conceived program. And I saw online that uh, Karen Hislop says, you still have your chops. <laughs> and which reminds me of Pablo Casal when he was in his 90s. Somebody asked him, why do you still practice? And he says, because I think I can get better. And I believe that is... Uh, also, Dr. Ward's philosophy that she keeps practicing. I will tell you, my inspiration is an Argentinian lady that is 80. I mentioned her 85 now, and she still does piano on both concertos and stuff. So I think it's That's right. Inspiration to the younger ones. Yeah. So thank you, and uh, when we, when, after we've had our closing prayer, we're going to ask you just to stick around and say hello to. Dr. Ward and tell her how much you've enjoyed it and get some lemonade. And uh, remember, next week starts our recitals. Don't uh, rush or put off your recital to the end uh, where we're trying to get everybody's recitals in on the last two Wednesdays of the semester. So I would like to see some people um, on next week's recital. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the gifts that you've given to your children. And we thank you for how Dr. Ward has shared those gifts with us today. As we leave, may we go encouraged and uplifted is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, thank you, Dr. Ar